Hey everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio. This is number three in my How to Paint Fur series. Thank you to Cheryl Smith Kappis and Joan Langdon, who are both on my Rachel's Watercolor Workshop Facebook group. Be sure to check that out. I'll put a link below. Thank you to them to answer my question of what beginners need to know about. And their question was, what is the difference between wet on wet technique and wet on dry technique? And how do you know when to use each technique? So we're gonna explore that today. So let's get started. Let's talk about wet on wet technique. What is wet on wet technique? Wet on wet technique is called that because you paint on wet paper with a wet brush. There are so many different combinations of wet on wet technique that you can use. You can paint on very wet glistening paper, like I described in the first session of this series. You can paint on half dry paper or buckling stage paper or any paper moisture level between those two. In addition, on any stage of these paper moistures, your paintbrush may have drippy tea consistency paint, or it may have milk consistency paint, or cream consistency paint. So there are a lot of different combinations of moisture level in your paintbrush and moisture level on your paper that you can use to achieve a lot of different effects. Wet on wet technique is the approach I use at least 80% of the time, but there are so many different effects you can get with this technique. You can get depending on how watery your paint is and how moist your paper is. By the way, you won't be able to get all the different nuances of effects unless you use 100% cotton, preferably cold press watercolor paper. Watch session one for more about where you can and can't skimp on art supplies and cheap alternatives that I've found to be acceptable. All right, let's answer the question, when do you use wet on wet technique? You use wet on wet technique when you want soft transitions between colors or you want soft shadow-like effects that have soft margins, when you want soft melting edges and you don't want any hard edges. One of the most common ways I use wet on wet technique is by wetting my paper first with clear water and then painting into that clear water on my paper with paint. That's also called charging, by the way. Another basic way to get started with a wet surface is to paint your dry paper first with tea consistency paint, very watery, and then add darker color or different colors to get soft effects within the boundary of where you put the wetness on your paper. Remember, you will still get a hard boundary or a hard edge wherever your wet area meets dry paper. That is why, like for this bunny, I painted inside the margins of the bunny with clear water, let it dry a little so my paint wouldn't explode, and then paint into it with black cream consistency paint to get the dark markings of this bunny. Let's look at a different example of painting wet on wet. Say you're painting a lab and there are areas in his coat that are defined but soft, like the shadow areas between the ear and the face. I'll moisten just that area that I wanna work in with clear water, get the excess water up with a paper towel or by smearing my water around until it's evenly distributed with my paintbrush, and then paint the soft but defined mark that I want. I'll let that completely dry, then rewet another area I want to add a feature to, and repeat that process over and over and over again until I have a nicely, softly painted dog that has all the features he needs. Let's look at one more example of where I painted wet on wet. A perfect example of something you want soft and fluffy is a bunny tail. So how do you do that? You paint clear water over the entire bunny tail and well beyond the margins of the bunny tail into the background, onto the ground beneath the tail, into the body. Everything surrounding the bunny tail is wet, evenly wet, all the way across the tail. And then you let it dry a little bit because you don't want your bunny tail to floof out into a big, huge area. You want it to be a cute little but soft bunny tail. So you take cream consistency paint. I use Daniel Smith Lamp Black because it furs out really nicely compared to other paints. And I'll do a test too. I'll put a little tiny dot, say in the middle of the spot I want to paint or in the middle of the bunny tail and see how much the paint diffuses or spreads out or blooms out. If it blooms out too much, I know I either need to blot it lightly or just sit and let it dry just a little bit and then try my test again until it blooms out just the right amount. And then you paint your bunny tail in the middle with cream consistency paint and let it spread out itself until it's the right size. 
and you might have to add a little paint and just watch it paint itself almost. So I love this approach to painting soft fur because it's like the watercolor almost paints itself. All right, now what is wet on dry technique? Wet on dry is when you paint on dry paper with a wet brush. Your brush can be very wet, a little wet, medium wet, and that's where the terms I talked about in my first session for this series about cream consistency, milk consistency, and tea consistency paint applies because you can have all different kinds of wet paint brushes with cream consistency or milk consistency or tea consistency. Remember, the more water you add to your paint, the lighter it's gonna appear when you place it on your paper with the brush. Let's answer the question, when do you use wet on dry technique now? So here I'm painting wet on dry. Why am I painting wet on dry? Because I'm painting his nose holes and those are not soft, they're not fluffy, they don't bloom out, they don't have soft edges, they have hard edges. So whenever you want hard edges, you have to paint on dry paper with a wet brush. In this case, I'm using Milk Consistency Lamp Black Paint, which means I've added about half parts paint to half part water. And another important thing to remember when you're painting in a small area like this where you have to have really well-controlled edges and you don't want it to get too bloppy, you don't want to lose control of your paint, you've got to Take a paper towel and squeeze the heel of your brush and make sure all the extra water is out of your brush and then dip your paintbrush in milk consistency paint on your palette and then use your wet on dry technique. So this is a time when I would use wet on dry technique when I want to have perfect control. I would say for me, because I'm an animal artist, I'm painting fur, and that's what we're talking about, painting fur. I almost always use wet on wet technique, but let's look at a few more examples of when you use wet on dry. So here I'm painting Kenobi, and I've already shown you this footage, but for the good of understanding what wet on dry is, this is it. When I had perfectly dry paper, and I wanted his furs to have a bit of a rough texture, and I wanted to control exactly where the fur went, like on a short furred dog, like a fur that's about the length of a lab's fur. Now for a really short haired dog, like a dachshund or a horse, I paint that wet on wet too, because I want everything to blend and merge, because you see the contours of the muscles underneath fur like that. You don't see uh, structured furs on uh, sh really short haired animals. But for animals that have fur that is kind of coarse and about the length of lab fur, painting fur wet on dry works really well. And so you can see that's what I'm doing here. The sun was hitting his fur, creating little sparkles in his fur anyway. And when you paint wet on dry with about milk consistency paint onto dry paper like this, then you get this really nice controlled fur texture. All right, thank you all so much for joining me on this tutorial, either next week or the week after my son's starting school. It's gonna be a crazy week. I'm going to be in the mountains for a couple days in the next few days. So I don't know if I'll be able to get a tutorial out to you next week, but the week after that, I definitely will. So be sure to subscribe because we will address another fur question that you all share with me, hopefully on my community page. Go to my community page and tell me what the heck I need to talk about because sometimes I don't know. I know it's hard to believe and my husband will tell you I always have something to talk about, but no, I need you guys to tell me what you want me to make a video about. <laughs> and I will see you all in the next tutorial and have a great week. I'll see you all real soon. And you get a good range of color and value. You have to use good paint. You have to get, you have to get, <laughs> you have to use you have to use good paper let me show you exactly what I did to show you all to make I don't why my brain I don't have enough coffee yet <laughs> wet on dry painting yields an edge that if you don't soften it will have a hard edge and sometimes you need a hard edge like in details especially yeah, I know, right? Go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody.